So, the campaign for the first round in France's presidential elections is now in full swing. Now, more than ever, shills on all sides are busy trying to convince everyone that the sky is green, that Islamic terrorism doesn't happen, or that socialism is not garbage. Well, maybe I should shill too. <laughs> but no, seriously. Let's explore. Hello everyone and welcome to the Freedom Alternative. So, big game in France. The first round is on April the 23rd. Now I'll be off the map on that day so I'd better comment on it now so I'll have something to refer back to once the numbers will be in. Now if you're reading the cathedral media you'll be tempted to believe that if Le Pen wins all hell will break loose. But don't worry too much because a communist is likely to win. For instance, the Los Angeles Times, not even a former newspaper, says about the upcoming elections the following, quote, With two weeks to go, two of the frontrunners are under investigation for fraud, and the traditional socialist and conservative parties who have governed France for more than 50 years are struggling to remain in the race. The latest polls have the independent Emmanuel Macron, who does not even have his own political party, virtually tied with far-right National Front leader Marine Le Pen to win the first round vote on April the 23rd. The first two go through a second vote on May the 7th. Benoit Hamon from the governing Socialist Party has been relegated to fifth place and François Fillon of the official opposition Le, Les Républicains to third. In an unexpected twist, the charismatic hard-left firebrand Jean-Luc Mélenchon, who is often compared with Bernie Sanders with his anti-capitalist, anti-globalization program, has risen to fourth place and is now slightly ahead of Fillon, unthinkable a few weeks ago. Now. There's just one problem with this analysis. Almost none of it, uh, none of its factual claims are, well, true. This article is published on April the 11th, and I'm recording this on uh, April the 17th. It will probably be a few days until I actually publish this video, but I'll venture to say that things won't change much by the time I publish it, and that the LA Times would still be wrong. First of all, it is absolutely false, literally fake news, that Macron doesn't have his own party. He does. It's called En Marche, and he founded it. And he called it En Marche partly because the initials would be EM, same as his own initials. I know, pretty smart. And he plans to field candidates for the upcoming parliamentary elections. This would have taken the LA Times 30 seconds to find out. That's why the LA Times is not even a former newspaper, but a toilet paper. It's still astounding to me that people pay to read this garbage from such a disdainful institution. But, anyway. Uh, another false claim is that Macron is virtually tied with Le Pen. Well, he is not. And was not at the moment when the article was published either. Macron is behind Le Pen by at least three percentage points. And what's more important, both Macron and Le Pen are dropping. Fillon is the third, which is the only correct claim made by this paragraph, but then that correct claim is contradicted one paragraph later, in which they say, quote, the charismatic hard-left firebrand Jean-Luc Mélenchon, who is often compared with Bernie Sanders, uh, has risen to fourth place and is now slightly ahead of Fillon. This is simply not true. Mélenchon is many things, but one thing he is not. He is not slightly ahead of Fillon. That would be wishful thinking. Also, one thing to keep in mind is that Macron is the cathedral media's candidate. That means, historically speaking, that polls regarding Macron need to be regarded with extreme prejudice because, again, historically speaking, that prejudice is very likely to be warranted. 
And I'm very confident that this will still be the case now, especially after we've already witnessed in the last year how the media shamelessly lies in the polls and really how wrong and out of touch they indeed are. And this goes for all three of the candidates. There are many people who will vote for Fillon even though in the public they say they're not decided. There are many people who will vote for Le Pen even though in public they say they lean towards Macron. I actually met one such individual. He and his whole family will be voting Le Pen. But because he works in a left-wing environment and he is gay, he will never admit that in public. Over at a cup of coffee, however, he'll say what most non-straight French feel. The hell with gay marriage, let Le Pen abolish it, I want to avoid being thrown off a roof. And while this is not apparent if you read the press, this is the majority feeling among many previously libertine and leftist demographics. Another phenomenon that is interesting to observe as far as the polls go is the fact that post-debate polls don't actually translate into big changes. So this means there are three distinct possibilities. The post-debate polls are just wrong, the general polls are wrong, or the voters consciously separate the two types of polling. Quite frankly, all three of the possibilities are, well, possible. What, I referring, what I'm referring to is the polls that ask people which of the candidate was most convincing types of polls done after each presidential debate. So, for instance, after the March the 20th debate, the polls showed the, that the most convincing candidate was Macron. Yet, right after that debate, Macron dropped in popularity, quite significantly so. After the April the 4th debate, the polls showed that the most convincing candidate was Mélenchon, who did rise in popularity, but look at the second and third place in being convincing. Macron and Le Pen came second and third respectively, yet they both dropped in popularity. Fillon came fourth and he rose a little bit. This tells me that either someone is lying or the, polls, uh, uh, or the polling is far less reliable than what the press would have us believe. All right. So... While I do wish a second round between Fillon and Le Pen, and I said in the past that if Macron and Le Pen end up in the second round, mental sanity would have lost, and thus mentally sane people should shift their effort to the parliamentary election, since the presidency is lost, no matter who wins, between Macron and Le Pen, that still leaves the question. What if Le Pen wins? Well, the short answer is... Well, not much if Front National doesn't get a majority or at least a sizable minority in the parliament, which is much harder to actually get. Marine Le Pen personally may be quite popular, we'll find out very soon, but the wider political party is very far from being that relevant at a national level. Yahoo News took it upon itself to ask the question, what if Le Pen wins, showing its bias right from the get-go with the headline in France, bracing for possible Le Pen nightmare. Give me a break. Anyway, it goes like this, quote, Paris Agency France Press, what if Marine Le Pen wins in May? Two weeks before the French cast their first presidential ballots, the specter of victory for the far-right leader who promises to crack down on immigration and outlaw gay marriage sends shivers down many a spine. Pollsters say the anti-EU firebrand can count on the unwavering support of about one in four voters to get her past the first round of voting on April the 23rd. Although they also say the National Front leader cannot win the, in the deci decisive May 7 runoff, whoever she faces, a great many pundits were wrong about Brexit and Donald Trump after failing to feel the populist pulse. And with one in three voters still undecided at this late stage, pollsters would be wise to hedge their bets. Predictions of a nightmare Le Pen presidency abound in bookstores and the media. The 48-year-old candidate poses a genuine peril, according to Mathieu Crossando, editor-in-chief of the left-leaning news weekly Lobs, which ran a special report last month titled Black Scenario of the First 100 Days. Now, Lobs, by the way, is the former Le Nouvel Observateur, and it's the official propaganda organ of the caviar left. Think of MSNBC, but in a magazine format. Huffington Post is... Comparatively, comparatively speaking, 
a right-wing magazine. Anyway, back to the article. Dozens of actors, singers, and other artists put their name, uh, names to an op-ed in the Liberation Daily last Sunday warning the National Front is on the threshold of power. We call for a bulwark against Marine Le Pen in the name of freedom of thought and creativity. Oh, how familiar does that sound? <laughs> <laughs> Reminiscent of the rump to Trump's election last year, many artists have said they would prefer exile to living under Le Pen. Like Americans virulently opposed to Trump, they say they are looking to Canada as a refuge. <laughs> as if, as if left-wing Frenchmen can actually get along with the Quebecois. <laughs> Anyway, Jean-Marie Gustave Le Clésio, the French Mauritian author who won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 2008, said as far back as 2015 that he would hand in his French passport if Le Pen becomes president. Others, including public figures, are promising active resistance to a government led by the far right. France's ambassador to, J to Japan, Thierry Dana, wrote in an op-ed last month that uh, he would, quote, shelve all diplomatic duties, close quote quote, if Le Pen is elected. The foreign ministry had to remind Dana of his obligation to remain neutral over the election. Also throwing neutrality to the wind was François Durper, um, an educator and historian who co-authored a comic book to titled La Présidente, using the feminine form of the noun, depicting France under Le Pen. For me as a professor of education sciences, uh, the question I would ask the next day after a Le Pen victory is how do you teach in French schools under Le Pen, he told Agency France Presse. I know what to do. I'll stay in France, I'll respect the outcome of the democratic vote, but I will resist with all my might any measure that goes against the French law, he said, citing Le Pen's pledge to give French nationals priority access to public services, including schools. Keeping non-citizens out of French schools would be a red line for Durper. We will be able to mount not just moral resistance, but also legal resistance, he said, noting, quote, judges are fighting Trump, not just far-left activists. <laughs> I mean, it's really cute when someone seriously implies that judges are not far-left activists. Cute, but ultimately wrong. Most judges are far-left activists. This is true in the United States, and it's true in France as well. Going further, the head of the International Human Rights Federation, Dimitri Christopoulos, uh, also said he would join the battle against the, uh, President Le Pen. Her victory would be, quote, a political defeat for human rights, but we would continue to fight, he, t he told the AFP. The ideological battle will be an existential priority for our society, says Christo said Christopoulos, a staunch defender of migrants' rights who divides his time between France and Greece. Laurent Geoffrin, editor-in-chief of the left-wing daily Liberation, said resistance should begin with the legislative elections in June that will determine the shape of the future government. We won't have fascism on day one, he said. France has a constitution and institutions and laws need a majority to pass in parliament, so the immediate fight is to prevent the Front National from winning a majority to implement its agenda. Geoffrin also noted that if Le Pen wins, she is unlikely to have enough support outside her party to form a coalition government and would be forced into a cohabitation arrangement. Now, Beyond the hysterical reactions of leftists, Yahoo News does a surprisingly good job at summing up the situation, which is why I read so much from the article. In the unlikely event that Le Pen wins, she will be governing under a cohabitation arrangement. Now, that's a bad thing for those who really believe in her agenda, especially the economic agenda of Front National, which is far more terrible than the social one. In fact, the social agenda of Front National is mostly logical, but Front National's economic plan is just terrible. But as I was saying, in a cohabitation arrangement, the only ones who would be happy would be people like me, who love gridlock and actively prefer a government that can enforce the existing law, but that is incapable of passing new policies. Gridlock is good. Those who want a government that works really have no idea what they're asking for. Venezuela, for instance, had a government that worked. No gridlock there. Now. 
If I were a Frenchman and would be faced with the Macron versus Le Pen choice, I would simply not vote. That's an insane proposition in and of itself. That's why a Fillon versus Le Pen race would be preferable. Those who want economic socialism can vote for Le Pen, and those who want mental sanity in this department would vote for Fillon and, well, hope for the best. <laughs> I mean, still bad, but nowhere near as bad as having to choose literally between an international socialist and a national socialist. But beyond my opinion, you can't really blame those who support Le Pen or who hope she would win purely out of spite, even as they mostly disagree with her stances. If she will win, she will win because a lot of people will vote for her not because of her policies, but just to piss off the right people. It's a terrible reason to back a candidate, especially a highly authoritarian one, but in a democracy, all votes count equally, one of the many reasons I'm not a fan of democracy. So the vote of, of the diehard Front National, Na National fan is just as good uh, as a vote of a 19-year-old Pepe the Frog fan who doesn't really care about politics, but just wants to see all the right people in the cathedral crying. That's how Trump won, basically. No reason to suspect there won't be such an element among Le Pen voters. Now, would that be enough to put her over in the Elysee Palace? My gut feeling says no. But as Yahoo News correctly points out, with a third of the public officially, at the very least, undecided, prudence is recommended. If that undecided third splits in half uh, for Macron and half for anyone but Fillon, all the calculations of the pundits including myself, are off the window. Ultimately, it all does depend on how many single-issue voters are out there, because Le Pen really is a single-issue candidate, even though she did try hard to present herself as a candidate with a broader appeal. But it will still boil down to Islam must be curbed now versus everyone else. The everyone else crowd would also include the Islam must be curbed, but not at the expense of everything else crowd, which will largely vote for François Fillon, who, by the way, still hasn't been indicted, as I predicted. I'm almost willing to bet that uh, he'll swiftly be left, left off the hook if he doesn't get into the second round, because Fillon's corruption scandal is a fake scandal. The French press's attempt to pretend that it's a serious concern is just pathetic. It really isn't. So yeah, this is basically my last video on this topic before the election. If the final will be between Macron and Le Pen, I'll only make one more video on it and then move on and consider the topic closed because mental sanity will have lost anyway. If Le Pen wins the second round, which again is unlikely, but if she wins, I guess I'll cover the historic, uh, sorry, hysterical <laughs> reactions by the left. I mean, I can't miss on that. That would be fun. But for those who really want Le Pen to win, please do know this. Even if she does win, most of what she promises simply cannot be done by the president alone, like getting the country out of Eurozone. She still needs a parliament that complies with her agenda, which is likely to happen roughly never. Uh, we, saw in the, we saw that in the regional elections, how popular Front National is beyond the charismatic leader. With those numbers, there won't be a majority Front National parliament anytime soon. I mean, I'm just saying, it's just not the time yet. Practical politics, I know, I know, I know, but practical politics is tough. Ideological purity tests on the internet is definitely much easier. That's why the realistic option, if you want to see any sort of progress in the right direction, still does remain François Fillon. At least the Republicans actually have a grassroots infrastructure that can indeed sustain a parliamentary majority and can push policy in the right direction. For the Frenchmen watching this, keep that in mind if or when you're voting. And with all of that being said, thank you for watching, thank you for your continuous and generous support, and um, I'll see you around on Freedom Alternative.